for one ninety nine. Ah, J A Amash twenty twenty. Well, with with that, you know, I, I suppose it is worth catching all of our fans and supporters up on the presidential race right now. And there's a lot of stuff up in the air. I don't want to, uh, you know, jump ahead. For those of you who have been following, who saw what was going on last week, yes, it does look like there is an effort by our chair, Nick Sarwar, to manipulate the process in order to get Justin Amash the nomination. That's what it looks like. And there have been no deliberate attempts at transparency, at, you know, explaining why Nick just walked out of the meeting last Saturday um about some of the manipulations of the uh, official libertarian party polls like libertarian party of kentucky in fact they had their debate on saturday that was the first broadcast and, and supported by the uh, libertarian party national at least live on on their youtube channel and it was like well we were waiting for amash to get in before we made it look like we had a field of candidates we were waiting for kokesh to be cheated out of being on the stage before we promoted the one with amash and uh you guys can go back, look, go through my Facebook page if you really want. I think all the best details. I've been sharing some stuff uh, from my friend Joshua Smith, candidate for Libertarian Party chair, and it's. Uh, it, it, I think it's. I think the race is being stolen by him too, or from him too. Excuse me, not by Josh. Josh, I, I got to say, I am. I am more confident than ever in my endorsement of Joshua Smith for chair of the Libertarian Party. Now. We thought going into the convention, we were still in a good position to win the nomination entirely, not outright on the first ballot. In fact, it looked like, uh, and, and just quick numbers so that people understand like how this works by, it's, it's a sort of sequential ranked choice of, of eliminated voting that happens in place at in-person conventions. So if you know I was coming in with even 25, 30%, and uh, Hornberger was coming in with 30, 35%, that because I'm the second choice of Berman's people and Dan's people and Arvin's people and, and, and all the other, uh, you know, lower tier radical candidates, that as they are dropped, that, that we would form a coalition to make sure that we have, a, you know, a, a, a both principled and practical candidate who's not the Republican light that they're trying to force on us at the last minute, which is what looks like is happening. And uh, this is not a condemnation of, 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 of Amash himself. I, I have, you know, I, I think he's a terrible candidate for the LP for a lot of reasons, but I have no reason whatsoever to impugn or, or even suggest you know, anything against his integrity whatsoever. Uh, if anything, I think he's just kind of a pawn in this being pushed into it because the people who want the duopoly to continue want the Libertarian Party to be as weak as possible. They don't want someone who's offering a platform that's going to start us off with 25% out the gate if we make it clear to the American people that we're putting 50 states a session on the ballot. That's what my platform offers. That's the potential. Uh, you know, we put up another washed up Republican. Is does, does he have any chance of breaking out? No. Does he have any chance of getting people excited? Not when he can go on MSNBC for 10 minutes and not say anything libertarian. That was really disappointing. Like, I wish he was better. And he is better than Gary Johnson in a lot of ways he's a sitting libertarian congressman that's huge really hard to deny the power of that is that going to get him a breakthrough with the mainstream media no they're favoring him now because they want him to be the nominee as soon as he's the nominee they're going to turn on him or ignore him or just you know maintain that <laughs> low level of, of, of patronizing coverage as, as they have this whole time so i have to admit on behalf of team and the fed that we did not come in to the national convention with the overwhelming support that we hoped to have built at this point. We have enough to be a contender and we should be treated fairly and taken seriously as that. And we are in a position right now to build a winning coalition of anybody but a Amash. And I wanna tell all of my state coordinators and volunteers right here, right now, please keep fighting through the end. This is a critical time. There's a lot of attention on us right now. We need to make sure that we're doing the right thing, that we're staying on a positive message, that we're winning people over with localization, and that whether it's an online vote that's stolen and manipulated or we manage somehow to have an in-person convention at this point, that we make sure we have the strongest showing possible. And at the uh, virtual convention, or I should say at, at uh, during the last 
LNC meeting this past Saturday, uh, just two days ago, it looks like what they did is pass that they are going to have the vote virtually on May 22nd and that Sarwark is going to get the control and manipulate this process. And I've, I've seen too much suspicious behavior from him uh, without any kind of explanation that uh, I, I can't say I trust him at this point to carry out a fair vote. Nick, if you're watching, again, I don't have any hatred or, or ill will. This is just what I'm seeing. And you're still in a position to prove me wrong, uh, to, to, to cast my suspicions aside if the vote is held in a truly fair and open, transparent manner. If we do away with secret balloting, which is the norm, the default for libertarian elections, if every delegate is asked to cast their vote in a way directly by name that is published at the, at the national level, not the state by state level, where the actual final national vote can be audited and every individual's vote can be counted. That's what we need to be fighting for now. And, and it's sad to say that the battleground has shifted. But the bottom line for me is that we are still in a position to win the nomination. We are in a very good position to be a vice presidential nominee and held uh, hope, help hold the nominee to a standard of the non-aggression principle of libertarian ethics. I would be very excited by that, you know, and it'd be a, a, a it would be quite a disappointment if uh, Amash, who tweeted recently his support for localism, if not localization, uh, you know, might embrace a a radical platform such as this. And radical, of course, is not extreme, but rather striking at the root. In fact, it's embarrassingly moderate to say that my platform only suggests cutting 3 million out of 22 million government jobs in this country. But uh, if it was someone like Dan Berman or Arvin Bora or, or John McAfee, I would say that I would serve as their vice president. I would make the commitment to you that I will similarly not serve as anybody's vice presidential nominee for the party if they are not adhering to a similar ethical line that would at very least transform the federal government into a voluntary institution, an ethical institution. And that can happen on day one. If if uh, even Justin Amash or Jacob Hornberger came out and said, you know, that they wanted to team up with me and all they were, were willing to assert or concede, and, you know, may, maybe they've already said this. I think Hornberger might have. Pretty sure Amash has not, uh, having not announced any kind of platform at all yet. But to say that, that he would pardon uh, everyone who is uh, possible under, under the presidential authority for victimless crimes, which is basically everybody under federal law. If you say that no, un, no basically from now on, any federal law is, is, is a request, you know, in terms of if, if it's a, a violation of a regulation or anything like that, else like that, that yes, regulatory agencies can kind of keep doing their thing, but it gets up to, to the actual conviction level, the, the president, and, and I would hope as the assistant vice president then, could step in and, and pardon, and as Arvin has suggested, be the pardoner in chief, or as Dan Berman has suggested, that uh, with taxation theft, federal taxes would, would stop being enforced, or at least anybody being persecuted for any kind of federal tax evasion would be uh, pardoned. And and that that's really my my ethical line, is that then you're saying, would you be president? Would you preside over an unethical institution? Uh, no, absolutely not. And that's why the basis of my platform is to throw the ring in the fire to take the federal government through the peaceful orderly bankruptcy process that we have described so many times at this point. And there's also a very good chance that uh, we're going to be organizing, as I've said, uh, veterans for whomever the nominee. Is. So we have that to look forward to as well, possibly standing up the Libertarian Veterans Caucus as, as, as a force within the LP. And I am really thrilled with, with everything we've done so far, with, with my own performances, with the performance of this team getting us to this point, and I'm ready to start billing for 2024. Win, lose, or draw, and this was the case, just so you know, whether or not we win the nomination, I'm going to keep running on this platform as long as support keeps building. I will maintain my commitment to this platform and these principles for as long as it takes. As long as the federal government exists, and as long as support for this line in the sand keeps building, as long as people keep coming over to our side of the line, the righteous side of the line, then I will keep speaking this message, and I will stay committed to running this race as long as it takes. So, any, any comments? Any more comments before we go to producer notes? Uh, 
uh, yeah, one here. Donnie Smith asks, Adam, have you invited Amash to debate with you on Adam versus the man? Yes, we have, actually, by email. CJ has sent an email to all of the candidates, including Amash, even though he's technically only exploratory at this point. And we have one scheduled, actually. So we did a series when uh, when coronaphobia started, uh, you know, of interviews with other presidential candidates in the LP. And we spoke with uh, Mark Whitney, who has since dropped out, uh, Arvind Vora, Dan Berman, Brian Ellison, um, I know uh, uh, Max Abramson, the state rep from New Hampshire. Um, there, I know there, there's there's one or two more I'm 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 forgetting here, and, and I, I hate to do this. Uh, Jim Gray also agreed to one in person at a debate, uh, I, I think, but hasn't responded to our email request yet. Um, so it, it's really interesting. Who's afraid to have just a one-on-one -on -one conversation with another candidate? Right. Um, did I say Dan Berman? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, Dan Berman uh, was one of them. So, and then the next day, I did an interview for him live on his channel, oh, yeah. and we ended up talking more about branding, which was a really fun subject. You know, thinking about how I, as Adam Kokesh, represent the brand of myself, and then I have these sub brands. We've got freedom and Adam versus well, freedom. Am I pointing the right? Nope, freedom. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, freedom and Adam versus the man, and. Uh, the, the Garden of Eden and Big Igloo Geodesics and Kokesh for President, all as, as distinct brands within the one brand of, of Adam Kokesh. And so um, I'm, I'm in, a, in a way, I, I'm excited for the opportunity now having to, to apply the lesson of this campaign cycle and everything we've done to get to this point. And, you know, and, and, and be that much stronger and make sure that the Libertarian Party is that much stronger for next year. And I, I've said this before, that if the result of me putting two years of work into this campaign is that, Ama excuse me, that, that Hornberger is the nominee instead of Amash, I will be very, very happy. And remember, the first goal of this campaign and the only one that, that I think was a, a reasonable one to say we are staking you know our, our our pride and our sense of accomplishment on on a goal it was that we made every single delegate race in the country competitive now with a few little exceptions for procedural stuff and whatnot every single state in the country had more people signing up to be delegates than they had slots in fact the one exception i was thinking was south dakota and since i've spoken to them uh, at their meeting a few weeks ago and Saturday at their virtual convention. Now they have more delegates than they have slots for too. I wonder, and I'll put this to the audience. I know we have a lot of uh, Libertarian Party activists in the audience, especially who tune in live to the show. And thank you so much, you know, when you could be spending this time. I bet there are people who are watching the show right now who are like, it, it, while they're listening out of one ear, they're you know they're taking notes or they're they're organizing some list for the libertarian party of their local affiliate or yeah. or something else like that but um shoot what was i going to ask them where was i going with that i'm not sure you were talking about oh for, for people who are their... yeah for, for people who are who are um you know in in active with their state libertarian parties or people who have been active trying to be delegates can anybody name a state that did not have a competitive delegate process this year? Because California was the big one. And California had, uh, it was 107, 109, it you know, changes a little bit from year to year, uh, delegate slots. Normally they only send 30 to 40 and then end up filling all of their empty slots with people from other states who usually end up representing the uh, campaign with the money at the end, which is of course always the Republican light campaign. And, uh, this year we filled their slots. Like it's not, it's not a thing. If if they are stealing this, and and I I I'm still very hopeful. I mean I think I, I still have an outside chance of winning the nomination. More importantly, I think the Libertarian Party grassroots has a good chance of defeating this incursion effort. Um, and it, it's it's harder to say. Well, I mean this this is, this is the same thing we got with Bill Weld in 2016. He became a lifetime member of the Libertarian Party two weeks before the convention and then ends up 
endorsing Hillary Clinton. So I, let me let me set myself up for some more. I told you so's before we yeah. move on here. And I know we we, we have some news to cover, but uh, we, we did, we're still in the opening of the show. We did the opening segment. We caught up with Jim. We did comments, and we haven't even gotten to CJ yet. Yeah. Um, and I know I know he has something to say about this. Uh, but yeah, we have we we have a really critical fight immediately before us to at least ensure that Justin Amash is not the nominee. There's nothing against him personally. Uh, even even in his legislature, I have not attacked him for voting to increase the funding of D.C. schools or the, this or that immigrant. He is, as far as I can tell, you know, and, and I, there are people trying to convince me otherwise still, you know, and, and I haven't seen the smoking gun. If someone wants to say, Adam, here's, you're missing this on. It doesn't matter to me with the mom. Like it really doesn't matter how, is he a true libertarian or not? I, I don't care. I, I, I believe that he is. I, I, I'm willing to give him absolutely the benefit of the doubt. It does not change my conclusion. One iota is that, which is that nominating Justin Amon, a washed up Republican for the fourth cycle in a row, someone who just joined the Libertarian Party, would doom us to be the Republican light party for decades. It would it, it's a losing strategy for us in, in so many ways. To me, that's the that's the, that's a singular ultimate point. Uh, in, in terms of what we're seeing now, it would be even worse if he is the nominee due to a shady process or as part of a shady process and it's already very shady you know and i i would encourage uh nick sorry nick you know what i i would i, I mean I'll, I'll even extend an olive branch that i would be willing to interview nick if he wants on this show and give him a chance to address all of my concerns and all of my criticisms and bring all of the questions from you the audience in real time to him as, as chair of the party and you know, I think the best we can hope for at this point, realistically, given what has happened, is that we have an online vote with full transparency and integrity. So two battlegrounds right now. Make sure that, that Amash does not win the nomination and make sure that we have a transparent and accountable national convention. I hope that it happens without a secret ballot. That's like I said, that's the norm. That's the norm. You don't have to put your name and, and that's the norm in the United States. And I, I don't know. I, I think that should change too. I think you know, if every, everybody was held to account for who they voted for, you know, not just I voted, but you know, I voted Republican, I voted Democrat, I voted Libertarian. Like I think allowing people to vote in secret was a bigger theory of mine. Maybe someone wants to test me on this. That governments and authorities throughout world history allowing people to vote in secret has not only allowed for corruption even where they don't even where they have appropriate mechanisms to prevent skewing of the vote but that just letting people vote in secret means they're more likely to do make that choice to vote out of fear rather than doing what they know is the right thing to do and I think when they come out of the voting booth, having voted Democrat or Republican, there's a big chunk of American society that is ashamed to have done that and grateful that the ballot is secret. You don't have a right to force your opinions on other people without putting your name on it. I don't think you have a right to force your opinions on anybody anyway, but certainly not without putting your name on it. That's another disgusting layer to this whole thing. Thank <laughs> you.